Coming up this week, GitHub CEO issues a stark warning to developers. Perplexity launches another high-profile partnership that could change how we use transactional products. GPT-5 leaks tell us what to expect from OpenAI's new models and what analysis of over 200,000 co-pilot conversations reveals about the future of work. Stay tuned for all of that and more. And as always, if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So first up this week, Perplexity has announced a major new partnership with OpenTable that lets users book restaurants from directly within Perplexity without ever having to leave the app. Users can type in some keywords relating to the type of restaurant that they want, and then Perplexity serves up choices among OpenTable's restaurant partners that meet your criteria. This partnership is positioned as powered by OpenTable, which is a win for them, but there are concerns about how these types of partnerships might play out long term. Becoming the default partner in AI search products for specific niches could become pretty lucrative over time with the right revenue share model, but as with all other parts of the web that are currently being gobbled up by AI, it also risks destroying the direct relationship that users have with brands, especially for industries like e-commerce. And speaking of e-commerce, Shopify is launching a series of new tools that use AI agents in its e-commerce stack. This includes a new checkout kit and the use of MCP UI. Now, MCP UI is a new extension of the MCP protocol, which allows companies to embed images of their products directly inside AI conversational tools. And in Shopify's case, this means stores can embed images of their products inside AI tools and agents. Figma also made some MCP updates of its own this week. Figma's MCP server can now read annotations directly from your Figma designs. This means that any notes about interactions, accessibility, or any other design considerations are surfaced to AI agents when generating code. In a recent poll, 90% of you said that you were either using MCP now or planning to use it in the future. And if you're currently thinking about developing an MCP strategy for your own product, this week's knowledge series over on Substack is focused on how to develop an MCP product strategy. In this piece, I take a closer look at some of the latest MCP servers released by top companies, including Intercom, Notion, Stripe, and others, and then use this to consider what an MCP product strategy might need to think about, including monetizations, the tools your MCP server uses, and more. So if you're interested in learning more about developing an MCP product strategy, then check out that over on Substack. Elsewhere this week, it seems that GPT-5 has been prematurely leaked on GitHub. OpenAI is set to be unveiling this later today, but according to the leak, GPT-5 will come in four versions. This includes GPT-5, which is focused on logic and multi-step tasks, GPT-mini, which is a lightweight version, GPT-nano, and GPT-chat. The models promise major updates in reasoning, code quality, and user experience, and GPT-5 features, according to the leak at least, enhanced agentic capabilities that can handle complex coding tasks with minimal prompting. GPT-5 is set to go head-to-head -head with the current leader in AI coding, Anthropic. And this week, Anthropic made two major announcements that might be of interest to product teams. First is the release of something called sub-agents in Claude Code. And sub-agents are pre-configured AI personalities that Claude Code can use to delegate tasks to. Each sub-agent has its own specific purpose and can be configured with specific tools that it's allowed to use. So for example, you might have a QA sub-agent that could proactively investigate errors. And the early response to this has been pretty positive. The second announcement from Anthropic this week is an incremental upgrade to Claude Opus with the release of Claude Opus 4.1. This upgraded model scores a 74.5% score on the Software Engineering Benchmark Test versus 72% for Opus 4. Their CEO recently confirmed that the majority of code written in Anthropic is either with or by AI. Curse's CEO also told The Verge this week that he thinks that 20 to 25% of a professional software engineer's job could be fully delegated to AI, with the potential for this to rise to over 50% as technology advances. One person who needs no further convincing about the potential of AI in programming, though, is GitHub's CEO. This week, he issued a pretty stark warning to developers. He said that engineers should embrace AI or get out of engineering. Speaking on X, he says that this shift isn't hypothetical. It's happening now. Developers move through clear adoption phases from dabbling skeptics to strategic AI collaborators, and those who reach the final stage say their identity as a developer has transformed. Their focus is no longer on producing code, he says, but on designing systems, directing agents, and validating outputs. My next title might be creative director of code, one developer told him, and that's not hyperbole, it's real. Now, this is a pretty blunt assessment, but it is a sobering wake-up call for engineers who still aren't adopting AI in their daily workflows. 
Now, of course, if you want to play devil's advocate here, you could say, well, GitHub has its own AI coding product to sell with GitHub Copilot. So the more engineers who adopt AI in their daily workflows, the better for them. But according to him, this doesn't mean the end of software engineering. In the full post, he says that the US Bureau of Labor Statistics projects that software developers are expected to grow by 18% in the next decade, nearly five times the national average across occupations. They just won't be the same software developer jobs as we know them today. Now let's take a look at some tools you can use, and we'll start with the latest product from Cohere that was released just yesterday. This is called North, and it describes itself as the next era of enterprise AI. This is a new AI agent platform that can draft and refine documents, including PRDs, financial reports, market research, and sales pipeline reports, as well as integrate into all of your existing tools like Gmail, Slack, Salesforce, and others. It also has the ability to integrate through MCP for secure access to any in-house applications. And according to Cohere, it counts the likes of Dell and LG amongst its current customers. So if you're interested in exploring new ways to in integrate AI agents into your company's workflows, then this major new release from Cohere could be worth checking out. Next is a tool called Graphy. And this is a pretty simple tool in its value proposition, but it essentially allows you to quickly transform a Google Sheet or an Excel spreadsheet into a pretty nice looking graph. And rather than having to fiddle with different configurations that you might typically have to do inside Google Sheets or Excel, you can simply use a conversational interface to suggest what tweaks that you'd like. These graphs can then be exported or embedded into Google Slides, PowerPoint, and Notion. So if you're looking for new ways to visualize data when you're putting together documents, then Graphy could be worth checking out. And the final product for this week is something called Lindy. Lindy has been around a little while, but this week they released Lindy 3.0, which has been repositioned as your first AI employee. This new version comes with a new agent builder, which lets you build custom AI agents in minutes with prompts. And these agents come with one feature in particular, which seems pretty powerful, which is called Autopilot. An Autopilot is a new capability that allows Lindy agents to log into their own dedicated browser and then perform whatever actions that you ask it to do. So for example, you could set up agents that automatically log into your emails, check your emails, and then give you an update. Or you might use this for things like social media management where you can automate likes and sharing or replying to comments on LinkedIn and, and elsewhere. So if you've heard a lot about AI agents but we're not quite sure how to get started, then Lindy seems like a solid way to get some hands-on experience with a new release of Lindy 3.0. Now let's take a look at some data and trends for the week. And first up is the news that ChatGPT has hit a new milestone with 700 million weekly active users up from 500 million weekly active users earlier this year. According to new analysis from the information, this implies that OpenAI is now generating $1 billion a month, compared to $500 million a month at the, just the start of this year. Now you can see from this graph that OpenAI is way ahead of its competitors, but Anthropic is experiencing a similar trajectory, albeit on a slightly smaller scale. But according to new analysis, Anthropic is in an extremely risky position since almost 50% of its API revenue is coming from just two customers, GitHub Copilot and Cursor. So with the release of GPT-5 just around the corner, what happens if GPT-5 beats Claude on software engineering benchmarks, and then developers using GitHub Copilot and Cursor switch to that? This is clearly a big strategic risk for Anthropic, but their CEO is determined that the company is on the right trajectory, and this week he spoke to Stripe's co-founder, John Collinson. In this interview, he covers a variety of different topics, and he predicts that the AI market is likely to consolidate to around three to six major players who can build their frontier models and have enough capital to sustain rapid development. He says that the economics of AI models resemble other VC-backed investments with large upfront costs to train models, followed by rapid revenue generation and then reinvestment into larger models. He also touches upon the role of AI in product design, and he says that in the future, we'll likely see more personalized and agentic AI products moving beyond today's text box interfaces. So if you're keen to understand more about how the Anthropic CEO thinks about these things, then this talk over on Stripe's YouTube channel is worth a watch. Elsewhere this week, Microsoft published a major new study which shows how people are actually using Copilot. So this data set analyzed 200,000 anonymized Copilot conversations from the US over nine months in 2024. And the most common use cases include summarizing information and writing. But one of the more interesting aspects of this study is where it refers to what it calls an AI applicability score. So this is a score that is used to estimate how relevant and useful generative AI is for different occupations. Now some are using this as a proxy to figure out which jobs 
are most at risk from AI disruption, but that isn't necessarily the conclusion to draw. This is more about looking at how AI might be applied to those roles. And the most applicable roles include interpreters and translators, historians and passenger attendants. And the roles with the lowest AI applicability scores include water treatment plant operators, bridge and lock tenders, and pile drive operators. So essentially anything that involves the physical world. So if you're interested in learning more about how people are using Copilot and how AI might impact those roles, then this new study is worth a read. One area that AI is definitely applicable to, though, is vibe coding. And while vibe coding may be hot right now, new analysis suggests that loyalty to apps may be pretty brittle. This new analysis from Anderson Horowitz shows that there is cross significant crossover in the number of users of different vibe coding apps. So, for example, nearly 21% of Bolt's users also browsed Lovable over the past three months, and 15% of Base44 users also checked out Lovable. And according to separate analysis this week, one of the major issues facing these vibe coding products is churn. Speaking to the information, one venture capitalist, Thomas Tungers, said that while these tools have grown really, really fast, the churn rates are huge. This is a result of how nascent these tools are, meaning that people are just still experimenting with them. And already data suggests that these two vibe coding products have worse retention rates than Cursor and Windsurf. Personally, I've paid for access to Lovable in the past and have since churned a few times since I only ever really needed it when I was working on something specific. So I'd guess that their churn and return rates may eventually be pretty high over the long run. But without a go-to daily product, it could be difficult for the likes of Lovable. Figma, on the other hand, already has its daily active users with its core product. It just needs to raise awareness of its rival Figma make. What do you think? Are you using vibe coding products and then churning? Let me know in the comments below. And finally this week, if your company is feeling uncertain about what responsibility means when building new generative AI features or products, then this latest survey may be of interest. This is a study called Responsible Generative AI Use by Product Managers and was conducted by UC Berkeley, Stanford and Oxford. It included a mix of 25 interviews with product managers and a global survey of 300 respondents in product management related roles. Its findings showed that 77% of product managers say they're uncertain about what responsibility means when building new generative AI features or products, but PMs were 2.3 times more likely to take actions such as testing for bias, when working in companies where leadership teams showed a commitment to AI responsibility. And on that note, I'll leave it there. Thanks very much for listening and watching. I'll be back next week with another briefing.